cop in this house trying to meet a 13 year old boy. So you thought it was okay to come here to see a 14 year old girl. Could you explain yourself? Five different states, five undercover investigations. Did you bring condoms with you? Is this appropriate behavior for no, a New York City firefighter? No, sir, it is not. What are you doing? A long parade of potential predators. Oh, no. He brought his son with him. I don't want to be on the news, dog. Well, it's a little late for that, dog. You got to stop this. But what happened after these men faced our hidden cameras? Sheriff's office. Get on the ground! Get down! Tonight, the latest. Learn what the law has in store. On To Catch a Predator. After two years and nearly 100 arrests, where are they now? Good evening and welcome to Dateline. I'm Stone Phillips. And I'm Ann Curry. From the heartland to the halls of Congress, our series of investigations into computer sex predators has raised concerns about the exploitation of children on the Internet. Tonight, Chris Hansen tells us what's happened to these men since our investigations began. And again, a reminder, some of what you will see and hear is explicit. Parking out front. He's out of the vehicle. 7.30 is here. They came from all walks of life. Hey, come on in! Blue collar. Hi. White collar. You can try one of my cookies. There's Some with long oh, rap sheets. Others without even a traffic ticket. The back door's unlocked. They all had one thing in common. Each carried on a sexually explicit chat online with someone who claimed to be a young teen, and each would be caught by Dateline. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story about adults meeting teens on the Internet. In Virginia, oh, on. a rabbi. You've got to stop this. In California, a high school teacher. Why did you come here, though? Help me to understand. Because I'm a sick son of a bitch. When we began our investigation nearly two years ago, we had no idea how many men would be brazen enough to actually enter someone else's home where a minor was supposedly alone. Yet it happened again and again. That's him right there. He's pulling in the driveway. And we certainly never expected to see anything like this. You're naked. There's a 14-year-old girl. You're chasing a cat around. You've got Cool Whip. Not once, but twice. Why don't you go ahead and cover up? Certainly. I'm sorry. Dateline touched a major nerve, exposing an epidemic of sexual predators in our country. When we first started our investigation, we were told by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, one in five children online has been approached by adults looking for sex. We knew there had been abductions and even murders committed by online predators, so we understood how serious this issue could be. But the question was how to go about reporting on this crime and exposing the men who might be inclined to commit it. We're trying to make contact and get an update. Right. Enter a group called Perverted Justice, a kind of online watchdog organization whose mission is to do what it believes law enforcement doesn't always have the resources to do. Make a full-time job of going after internet predators. And they do it by posing as kids online. And his left hand is in his pocket. But... At any given moment, one of Perverted Justice's 50 volunteers, some who say they were victims themselves of sexual abuse, troll internet chat rooms, usually through AOL and Yahoo, waiting to be approached by a predator. Are these chat rooms really that creepy? Oh, they're just loaded. Yeah. I mean, you know, um... Half the times we have to close down some of the windows. There's so many guys hitting on us that'll crash our machines. While perverted justice has no authority to arrest the potential predators it identifies, in the last year it has consistently worked with law enforcement in the criminal prosecution of those men. The watchdog group does it by providing transcripts of their online chats that can be used as evidence in court. But we wanted to take what perverted justice does one step further to see if these predators would actually leave the world of cyberspace and show up at a house where they were told a child was alone. There we go. Now we're back. For our first investigation, we rented this house in Long Island, New York, in a middle class neighborhood. We rigged the home with hidden cameras inside and out. Next, perverted justice decoys all around the country began operating in chat rooms, identifying themselves as a child alone in this house, a child open to the idea of sex, even with an adult. Now, how explicit do you have to be to lure these guys in? Well, we don't really have to lure them. They'll come to us. We go into these chat rooms. I haven't said a word to anybody. I'm sitting in the room, and the IMs start popping up. 
and they start coming on. And the parade began. One after the other, grown men made dates and showed up at our undercover house. Just sit down at the counter for a minute and I'll be down in a second. Some talked probably because they thought I was with law enforcement, although I never yeah. pretended to be a cop. Well, well, you want to tell me why you really came over? I really wanted to just take them to the movies. And but none had really any idea happen. our hidden cameras were going to expose them before a national audience. When we told okay. them, most headed for the door. And you don't have my permission to put me on tape either. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story... You can't put me on, on TV. But in that first investigation, none was more shocking than one man who never made it in the door, although he came awfully close. He's a man in a position of trust. 24-year-old Ryan Hogan, screen name Ryan4686, a New York City firefighter. Want to call me? He wants to talk. After spending hours engaged in a sexually explicit chat, sometimes from the firehouse, he makes a plan to come over to have sex with our 14-year-old. Coincidentally, when he drives by, he sees a police car parked near the house and has a possible burst of conscience. He went back to saying there was immoral and illegal and everything else. Still, he goes home, gets comfortable again, turns on his webcam, exposes himself, and masturbates, all while wearing his New York City firefighter sweatshirt. Yeah, it's obscene. It's obscene. And then, unbelievably, he says he's going to come by the house again. He never makes it, so we go looking for him. Hey, Ryan. Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Is this appropriate behavior for a New York City firefighter? No, sir, it is not. For any adult to for have any, this kind of a conversation with somebody adult? who says no. they're a 14-year-old girl home no, alone? No, sir, it is not. Then what are you doing, Ryan? I'm... Um, I made a mistake at the time. I made the judgment call to correct that mistake. Is there anything else you want to say about this? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think uh, people got to use their heads. People should know better. Um, I'm, I made a mistake. Either way, what he did was a crime. And after our story aired, Ryan Hogan was terminated from the New York City Fire Department. Last year, he pleaded guilty to using the Internet to transmit obscene material to a person under 16. He faces up to 16 months in prison and must register as a sex offender. He's scheduled to be sentenced next month. New York was our first investigation, and in two and a half days, 18 men walked down this driveway to meet someone who said they were a 12, 13, or 14-year-old home alone. The question was, how many more men were out there, and where? When we return, remember this man? You sent pornographic pictures. The rabbi with an alibi. Where is he now? You've got to stop this. To Catch a Predator continues in a moment. Would it happen again? Would men show up in a different house, in a different state, to meet a child home alone? Hello? Hi. Hey, hold on a second. I gotta change my shirt, yeah? Okay. You bet they would. Did you bring condoms? Yeah. And they'd also meet Dateline. Hey, how are you? Good, I'm like so. Good, why don't you have a seat right over here? No, thank you. Our second investigation took us to the suburbs of Washington, D.C. Our house was rigged with nine hidden cameras, three with views outside, one pointed in the garage, and five inside the house. I don't know, because I'm all blushing. As the investigation progressed, volunteers from Perverted Justice, the group dedicated to catching Internet predators, were busy as ever, chatting online with men like this. VA Mail 69 2005, who's 28, is talking to our decoy, Erin, who says she's a 14-year-old. He asks her bra size if she shaves anything other than her legs and says there's just something about a teen body. We'll see if he sends a picture or anything. Here in Virginia, as in many other states, it's generally a crime to send children sexually explicit material, even if it turns out the recipient is an adult posing as a child. Add using the Internet to entice a child into having sex, and Lieutenant Jake Jacoby of the Fairfax County Police Department says the laws are even tougher. So merely by using the Internet to set up a sexual liaison with somebody who's underage, that's a felony. Yes, it is. 
It was during this second investigation that we truly began to see just how vast the problem of online sexual predators was. The men coming into our house, apparently for sex with a minor, were from all walks of life. Like Joe Wunderler, a military intelligence sergeant interested in bestiality. Why are you so nervous? I just got nervous. So you thought it was okay to come here to see a 14-year-old girl? No, I didn't. And you say, would you ever try anal? Ouch, that sounded like it could hurt. Not have done right. You have to be very gentle with that. Quite a Romeo. I'm, I'm a lonely guy, what can I say? Now, Wonderler is doing his talking in court. He pleaded guilty to attempting to entice a minor to have sex. Federal guidelines call for a minimum sentence of five years in prison. He's due to be sentenced in July. Until then, he remains on limited active duty. The Army has initiated a separate action to have him removed from service. Over three days, they came one after the other. So many, we had to keep a detailed calendar. Total today? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten so far. Men whose professions made them respected members of the community. This man letting himself into our house makes his living working with children. Stephen Benoff is a special education teacher looking to meet a 13-year-old boy. What are you doing here? I thought I would come see him. But... Come see him for what? I wanted to meet him. While online, our 13-year-old decoy asked the teacher to bring condoms. Did he? What does that say about your intent? Well, I always have them with me, but... What is a 54-year-old man doing coming to this home to see a 13-year-old boy? I obviously made a big mistake. After our broadcast, Benoff, after 31 years of teaching, retired. Is there anything else you'd like to say? We'd like to hear it. If you think a teacher trolling for a date with a minor is a breach of trust, how about an emergency room doctor? Dr. Jeffrey Beck, a 50-year-old, is here to meet a boy who claims to be 14. His online chat is not as sexually explicit as the others. He talks about covering the teen with hugs and kisses, saying, I want to cuddle you and make you feel safe and loved and cared about. I'll be right back down. Okay. Watch how he tries to follow our decoy upstairs. I have to go up if you want. Why don't you come over here instead? When I confront the doctor, he says he had no intention of having sex with the boy. What's really going on here? What's really going on was I came over to take him out for lunch. He said he only came here because he felt badly for the teen, who was left home alone. He was so anxious to have some company when he was left by himself for four days, but under circumstances it sounded neglectful. So you're the Good Samaritan? That's correct. After our story, Dr. Jeffrey Beck moved to California. His medical license there has been suspended. That a doctor would show up at this house surprised us. But it would be one of many surprises here just outside of Washington, D.C. Then, of course, came this man. From his chat with our decoy, the 54-year-old clearly knew what he was doing. Just, you're so, so young. I've never been with a young man like you, but I would like to. Then he walks right into our kitchen. I gotta ask, you still gonna be out for tonight? We'll see. <laughs> so how can I help you? What are you doing here? Not something good. This isn't good. Not good? I think that's kind of an understatement, isn't it? What do you do for a living? A rabbi. That's right, a rabbi. David Kay, the man who sent several pornographic pictures of himself, is a man of God. He's been a staff member of an organization that provides educational programs for Jewish high school students. What are you doing in this house? trying to meet a 13-year-old boy. Okay, look, you know I'm in trouble, and I know I'm in trouble. I am not interested in getting any further in trouble. And when he learns he's going to appear on national television... I am Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on computer predators. No, come on, guy. Oh, 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 you don't want to touch anyway. You don't want it. You've got to stop this. Sit down. Sit down. You don't have any You're free to, you're free to leave any time. Rabbi Kay called us several times claiming he did nothing wrong. 
He resigned his post with that Jewish organization the day before our story aired. And just this past Friday, six months after we broadcast our report, the U.S. Attorney's Office filed two charges against David Kay. One for attempting to entice a minor to engage in an illegal sexual activity and the other for travel with the intent to engage in illicit sexual conduct. Hello? Knock, knock. I can come in. Where are you? Hello? Meanwhile, our investigation in Virginia wasn't over, not by a long shot. Our decoy had asked one man to strip before he came into the house. Police sometimes use this technique to show intent, but we never thought he'd really do it. Could you explain yourself? I'm sorry. Why don't you go ahead and cover up? Certainly. The man's name is John Kennelly. He's 43, and his father says unemployed. So you just woke up this morning and said, I'm going to get involved in an internet conversation with a 14-year-old boy. I'm going to go to his house, strip naked, and walk in with a 12-pack of beer. No, sir. What would have happened, John, if I wasn't here? I probably would have chickened out, sir. You might think he would have learned his lesson, yet we find him right back online in a chat room the very next day, trying to arrange another meeting with a young teen. What do you suppose the odds are that a guy like that would agree to another meeting? I would have said zero last night after watching what happened. Well, the man who called himself Special Guy 29 defies the odds and agrees to meet at a fast food restaurant. But first, he confirms the meeting is not about food. He really wanted to make sure it was about sex. Sure enough, here he comes walking from McDonald's. I have been in television for 24 years. I just came to get something to eat. And I have very seldom been at a loss for words. Afterwards, police raided Kennelly's apartment and removed his computer. He's been charged with using a computer to solicit a minor, a felony. His trial is scheduled for later this year. Two investigations so far in two states, 37 men caught over six days, and the biggest bust is yet to come. Next, a convicted child molester walks through the door. I can't believe that he's still out there doing this. You'll hear the heartbreaking story from one of his victims when To Catch a Predator continues. Even after two investigations in two states, with millions having seen our broadcasts, men still arrived at Dateline's door. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen our stories on computer predators? Yes. This is one of them. Unlike our previous hidden camera operations, where after leaving the house, some men were able to make a run for it, this time at our home in Southern California, things would be different. This time, law enforcement was waiting. We were approached by perverted justice to do this large sting. Sergeant Chad Bianco with the Riverside County Sheriff's Department and a perverted justice volunteer, uh, we, screen name uh, Frag, devised a plan. We were in telephone contact and two-way radio contact with perverted justice and they would let us know when someone was getting close. The sergeant and his men are staked out in a mobile home parked in the driveway next door. Perverted Justice hands them the chat log so they're prepared. We're off and running in California, and it isn't long before a trucker, an actor, and a songwriter are confronted by Dateline. And then the cops. So I had everything brought to Viagra? Well, well that was, that's all, that's all there in the, in the car. In Cialis. That's all there in the car in case I would have run into someone else, not necessarily this girl. At one point, the crowd of potential predators gets so large, Sergeant Bianco, who has a total of 15 people working for him, runs out of manpower. I had no one available. We had all of my investigators were dealing with people that we had arrested, and there was, you still had people coming to the house. One of the men who came to meet an underage teen is a federal agent working for the Department of Homeland Security. My father was a police officer. I was a police officer. And here comes Kinky Man in Corona. You'll never guess what he does for a living. I'm in education. You're in education? Yeah. A teacher? Mm-hmm. He's 43-year-old Walter Edward Babst, a high school teacher, a married man with children. What are you doing here? 
getting my ass kicked. Getting your ass kicked. Yeah, I knew it. I knew I should. I knew it was a setup. Uh, no, I need you to sit down, please. I need you to just arrest me and take me to jail and, and execute. I need me. to talk to you first. He was arrested and charged with attempting a lewd act with a child under 14. His teaching certificate was suspended. It's been a disturbing scene watching grown men show up after discussing sex with someone posing as a 12 or 13 year old child. Check it out. This is his picture, right? That's his sex offender register picture. It's the same guy. Yeah. Why don't you have a seat right there, please? This 68-year-old sex offender, Robert Emmett Lyons, was arrested only five months ago for a lewd sex act with a person 15 or younger. Now he's in our kitchen planning to meet a young boy. So you had intercourse with an underage boy? Yes. Yes. I made a mistake of just doing it, and I didn't even know he was 15. He told me he was 18. How long were you in prison for that offense? I wasn't in prison. You weren't in prison? You got probation? Correct. How long were you on probation? I'm um, still on probation. You're still on probation now. So you're on probation for having sex with a boy, how old? 15. 15. And now you're in this house to meet a 13-year-old boy. That was not my intention. What was your intention? Just to talk, whatever. Now he'll have to do his talking to deputies. As he walks out Dateline's door, yeah, throw them down. He is arrested and jailed until his trial. He's charged with attempting a lewd act with a child under 14. But he's not the only registered sex offender who showed up at our house. Here's 42-year-old Thomas Bodner. We found him online chatting with a decoy posing as a 13-year-old boy. Bodner said he loved him and asked if he could be his first. How you doing? Bodner runs out the door as soon as he sees me and gets tackled by investigators. And with his head still bleeding from the tackle, Bodner speaks to the detective at the booking station. It's not his first arrest. What did you do uh, your time for? What were you charged with? My brother, I'm saying right here. What he doesn't want to say is that he molested a child more than 20 years ago. Desiree Holcomb. Dateline tracked her down and told her about this man from her past. I can't believe that he's still, I mean, out there doing this. She was only a third grader when she first met Bodner. He was a volunteer at a boys club special friend program. But not long after he befriended Desiree and her family, Bodner began to molest the three children one by one. He got my brother Ed the worst. He's mentally challenged, so I, I think that he had the, the worst of the sexual abuse. And um, I was in the middle, and then my brother, my youngest brother, was got the, the less of the sexual abuse. It took months, but Desiree finally told her mother about the abuse. She went straight to the police. Bodner was convicted of sodomy and later was sentenced to 10 years in prison. It was a devastation to all of us. We still suffer from what he's did to us. And his trail of victims doesn't end there. It also led to Palm Springs, California. In 1999, he was convicted of oral copulation with a person under the age of 16. Now he faces a new charge of attempting a lewd act with a child under 14. He'll remain in jail until his trial. Bodner was just one of the 50 men arrested in the Riverside investigation. The four registered sex offenders are behind bars awaiting trial. For the others, their cases are winding their way through the legal system. Already, three men have pleaded guilty. Daniel Allen, who had a prior conviction for stalking. Mr. Allen, sir, uh, sir you have a right to be sentenced today. Robert Forte. Is your desire to plead guilty? Your name is what? And Eric Pallison, who ran out the door when we started asking questions, quietly entered his guilty plea two weeks ago. Or will direct your guilty plea be entered. All, right. All three will be sentenced in June. Three investigations in three major cities, 88 men caught in a period of nine days. Well, next, what will happen in small town America? Remember this sixth grade teacher? I know she's a kid. How old? 13, 14. Police say he was at it again when To Catch a Predator continues.
Welcome back to Dateline's investigation into computer sex predators. Three states, three undercover operations, 88 men exposed, all of them near major American cities. Now we head into our fourth investigation in the small community of Greenville, Ohio. And we're about to see that even far from the big cities and suburbs, vulnerable young teens are not far from danger. Here again is Chris Hansen. Miles from any major city, down long country roads, past cornfields and cow pastures, Dateline set up this house in rural Ohio. We're in the middle of nowhere. We're 45 minutes outside of Dayton, and we're five, six hours from Chicago. But that didn't stop the parade of men from traveling hours to get to us. After driving 104 miles, this man appears anxious as he fumbles with his zipper. Now, what were you doing with your pants there when you were heading towards the door? My zipper came down, excuse me. And this man, a training manager pulling up to our house, drove 112 miles. It's past 2 in the morning. What made you think it was okay at 42 years old to walk into a home at uh, roughly 2.30 in the morning where a 15-year-old girl was apparently home alone? Well, I wasn't for sure she was 15. Or but that's exactly what he was told online. You're only 15, a little young for this, aren't you? Yep, I'm 15, and no, I'm not, okay. Are you still a virgin? <laughs> Stupid question for an older man to ask a girl like that. But baby, 15 can get me 20. Yeah, it probably can, it probably will. Sheriff Thomas, let me see your hands, get on the ground, get on the ground. It won't get him 20, but it will get him arrested. Ohio's dark county sheriff's deputies are waiting outside. Okay. You have the right to remain silent. In Ohio, in order for prosecutors to file the most serious charges, a police officer needs to be involved in the online chat or phone conversation. Since perverted justice members are the decoys, some have been temporarily deputized. We hired the organization as consultants so we could watch them do what they normally do, go into chat rooms and pose as 12 to 15 year olds, home alone and interested in having sex. Need a man in uh, Michigan, we don't know if he's going to show or not. They've been busy chatting online with a sixth grade school teacher. In Ohio, we hired a 19 year old actress to play the role of a young teen home alone. Using his webcam, James Rutherford puts on a show for our decoy. He thinks she's 13. Now he's pulling into our driveway in his red Corvette. I'll, I'll be right back. Just sit at the bar and I'll be right there. Come here. No, I promise I'll be right back. No, come here. I'll be right there. Oh, Just yeah. wait. Gotta be a little patient. Actually, I want you to come here. That's what I thought. Rutherford yeah, says he had a feeling this was a setup, but he admits he was fooled into believing he was talking to a young teen. I know she's a kid. How old? 13, 14. 13. And how old are you? Too old for 13, 14 year old. Too old. Tuck your head. Just like all the men who come through our door in Ohio, the teacher is arrested and transported to the county jail, where he's photographed, right. fingerprinted, strip searched, and thrown in jail. He calls his employer from jail. He resigned that position yesterday in order to spare his students. Rutherford said that when he goes online, he doesn't specifically look for underage teens. But since our broadcast, we learned Rutherford was chatting with someone else in addition to perverted justice. Unbeknownst to the teacher, he was online with a Carmel, Indiana police officer posing as a 13-year-old. At times, Rutherford activated his webcam and performed sex acts. After seeing our story, the officer was able to identify him. He faces eight new felony counts of child solicitation. Hey, come on in. I just got to get my coat off. Still, the parade continued. The man walking down our driveway is a budget analyst for the military. I got to finish getting changed, okay? Huh? I got to finish getting changed. Well, I'll watch it. 47-year-old Kevin Westerbeck is expecting a 13-year-old virgin. Instead, he meets me. Hey, how are you? Right, how you Could you do me a favor and have a seat right over there on that stool, please? Yeah. Westerbeck, like so many others, claims he was just coming to talk. And he also brings up a subject we heard quite often here in Ohio. Religion. What makes you so religious? Because I have a faith in God. Didn't your faith in God suggest to you that you shouldn't come over here to hang out with a 13-year-old girl after that's, a sexually charged conversation on the Internet? That's why I turned around the first time, and then she called me. I thought, well, I'll just go over there, say hi, and be done with it, and go on home. 
but this is not the first time Westerbeck's been caught setting up a meeting with a young girl on the web. You pleaded guilty yes. to solicitation of a minor for sex. It's a plea. You pleaded guilty. Correct. And you got sentenced for that plea, correct? That's correct. 11 months. Correct. Four days later, he's back in court, and a judge rules on his status as a sex offender. The court will make a finding that you are a sexual predator. But it doesn't end there. Unbelievably, we learn even more about Westerbeck's criminal past, rape of a little girl, part of his extended family. Sergeant David Atkins of the new Lebanon, Ohio Police Department took the report a year and a half ago. It was late at night. There was a thunderstorm. She was scared of the storm, so she went to his room because she wanted the comfort of an adult. And ultimately, he pretty much violated that trust and confidence that he had. Last month, Westerbeck pleaded guilty to raping a child under the age of 13, sentenced to 10 years in prison. But he's moving quickly from the camera. He's coming around, guys. Come chill and ride with me. During our three-day investigation, 17 men came to this house to meet a young teen home alone. Hello? He's running to his car, running to his car. Get on the ground! Get down! And all 17 were arrested. You understand that right? Yes. Sheriff, let me see your hands. Put your hands up. Including this 21-year-old paramedic who has a thing for feet. I guess sexual stuff. For sexual stuff? Like what? You're talking about kissing and, Kiss, and what else? rubber feet, stuff like that. Rubber feet? Yeah. And this family man who online made plans to take the virginity of a 15-year-old. No, did you bring anything with you tonight? Such as? Condoms. Yes, I did. His mother, a prosecutor from another county, represented him. He has absolutely no failures to appear whatsoever in any court anywhere. So we'll set bail at 2500 cash sure to your property. All 17 men have been charged with attempted unlawful sexual conduct with a minor. All pleaded not guilty except this man. Have you contacted a lawyer? No. You plan to do so? No. Alonzo Wade pleaded no contest. He was found guilty and is awaiting sentencing. The tally now, 106 men over a period of 12 days in four investigations. Next, we head to Florida. I don't want to be on the news, dog. Well, it's a little late for that, dog. From strange interviews to disturbing encounters. Oh, oh no. Oh, my God. He brought his son with him. What's happened to these men when To Catch a Predator continues? Okay, here he comes. He's coming back. No matter where we went, we heard the same old story. What are you doing here? Just hanging out. Hanging out. Men planning to meet someone who said they were an underage teen tried to explain away their behavior. I was just going to hang out. I really wasn't going to do anything, to be honest with you. It was the same in New York, Virginia, California, and Ohio. I don't know why I did it. I just wanted to party, that's all. Hey, how are you? So when we began our next investigation, this time in Fort Myers, Florida, we were ready for more excuses. What's up? I'm looking for work and stuff. Looking He's just work. one of the two dozen potential predators who came to our home in Florida. I was just going to hang out and I felt like I'd be more a big brother more than anything. I do Big know. brother? Yeah, so you're coming over to be a mentor? In a way, yes. And I'm sure you've heard that 20 billion times. 20 billion and one, counting to nine. Go ahead and cover up. While we've met some memorable people throughout our investigation, some of the men in Florida are without question unforgettable. See, okay. We're doing a story do on adults who try to meet kids on the internet. <laughs> hey man, I don't want, I don't want to um, be on, on the news, you feel me? We are filming. I don't want to be on the news, dog. Well, it's a little late for that, dog. Now, if there's anything else you want to tell me... He quickly comes up with a disguise. And as far as interviews go, this may be a television first. All I got to say is, ain't no, nothing going on here, dude. Nothing funny going on here. Run into the car. But Move. the transcripts of his online chats and phone calls were enough for police to charge him with a felony. And this was not his only encounter with the law. He has a long rap sheet. In 2002, he led police on a high-speed chase in a stolen car. He was also convicted of grand theft and trying to sell stolen goods. NBC again. And twice he was convicted of battery, the most recent case in January. 
You'll lose. Meanwhile, back at the house. Hey, come on in. What kind of alcohol did you bring? I brought Absolute Citron. I brought Mandarin Orange. I brought a shot of Jägermeister. Wow. In several cases, the men were asked to bring food, alcohol, and condoms. Law enforcement says this helped show intent to solicit a minor. What have we got here? A rose. A rose? What about condoms? Did you bring condoms? Yes, sir. You did. Why don't you put those on the table? No, sir, I carry them. And as you'll see, some seem prepared to do things that Fort Myers, Florida Police Chief Hilton Daniels finds quite alarming. The one that bothered me the most was the guy that showed up with rope and duct tape in his vehicle. Did you bring rope with you tonight? I have rope in my car. You have rope in your car? Yes, for my job. You talk about using the rope in various sex acts with this 15-year-old girl. Get down now! When he leaves the house, he's arrested. All right, we need to clear this quick. Clear quick. He's getting out of the car. But possibly the most disturbing man we met was this one. Oh, oh no. Oh, my God. He brought his son with him. He brought his son with him. He's got his child with him. He's a 40-year-old married man, Clifford Wallach, screen name Photofix. He's here to meet a boy who told him online he was 14. Dell from Perverted I mean, Justice, want, posing as the boy, the spoke with Photofix to, on the uh, phone. He said, I like oral all aspects. I said, giving or receiving. He said, both. I said, cool. He said, you up for that? I said, sure. Coming in the back door. Holding his son's hand, the 40-year-old walks into the house. Where'd you go? Because we don't want to scare the little boy, we immediately tell the man what's going on. I gotta tell you something. And I'm going to tell you just straight up right now. Yeah. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Okay. We're doing a story on adults eating children. I was just to take some lunch. My point is, because your child is here, I think it'd be best if you just went okay. ahead and left. Yeah, I agree. I never going to do this again. Since the police know the man has his son with him, they approach him carefully. Sir, right there. You come here. You come here. Let go of the child. A female officer quickly takes the little boy and whisks him away so he doesn't have to further witness his father's arrest. Please give me my son, please. The man is taken away in handcuffs and brought to a transfer station. Please, I want to stay with my son. That's not, that's not an option for now, sir. I didn't do nothing wrong. I was okay, only going to take to lunch. I can't feel my hands, please. The police contact the boy's mother at work. Tell her what's going on, and she comes and gets him. Let's go inside and play. Come on. You want to get a drink? Yeah? Meanwhile, the dad is jailed. Come on in and make a left. Photographed and put behind bars. He's now awaiting trial. His five year old son is back home with his mother. The Florida Department of Children and Families is conducting an investigation into the little boy's welfare. While this story is upsetting, the story of this next man who online calls himself Crazy Trini 85 is downright bizarre. That's him right there. Get on four. In his chat, he wants to watch our decoy, who said she was 14, perform a sex act on a cat. They discuss it further on the phone, and the decoy tells him she'll try it if he's willing to strip off all his clothes and walk into her house naked. Remember, police tell us if an individual goes along with something like that, it helps prove intent. Where are you? Why well, just take a seat? Have a cookie. I made that because I'm going to the cool It was kind of a little surprise. You want to explain yourself? Grab that towel right there, please. Wrap it around yourself. And please sit in that stool. What are you doing? Making a mistake. Making a mistake. I mean, I can only imagine what would have been going on in this house had I not been here. Am I wrong to think that? No, you're not. So what's going to be happening if I'm not here? You're naked. There's a 14-year-old girl. You're chasing a cat around. You've got Cool Whip. And you want this girl to do some sex act with the cat and then you'll have sex with her. Is that accurate? Yes. After he gets himself dressed, he's arrested and sent to jail. He's charged with attempted lewd and lascivious battery, using the computer to solicit sex with a minor, and transmitting material harmful to a minor.
This is the person apparently walked into the room naked. The next day, he's brought before a judge and bail is set. That does come out to $50,000. This week, he pleaded not guilty, like all the other Florida men who have entered pleas so far. So, five states, five investigations, and a total of 130 men caught. When we come back, the dangers sink in for parents and teens. And they go, oh my gosh, I've, you know, I've done that. It could have been me. Steps every family can take to protect kids online. If you could actually look through cyber glasses and see who's peering in your window, who's in your daughter's room, who's reading your daughter's blog, who's cyber-stalking your son. It is reality, and the fact is, is that we have become um, very ignorant to those types of things because we can't see it. And it's what parents often don't see that can have tragic consequences for kids online, according to Terry Schroeder, who is president of iSafe, an organization devoted to online safety. I think parents have known that this has been around. It's just their attitude is, doesn't happen in my house. It's not going to happen to my son or daughter. iSafe travels the country warning parents and teens how not to become a victim of computer predators. What hits home, Schroeder says, is when teens learn just how often their peers are solicited for sex online by an adult. You can hear a pin drop when they start seeing the stories of others being hurt. And they start relating to it and they go, oh my gosh, I've, you know, I've done that. It could have been me. Kids who have their own blogs on social networking sites like MySpace.com can be irresistible targets for predators. Teens need to know that more than just their friends are reading what they post. Just ask this guy. Hey, how are you? All right. Why don't you have a seat on that uh, stool right over there for me? He's here after making a date for sex with a 13-year-old girl. Do you check out the MySpace sites of young women? I just, whatever is in a chat room and I go to see their picture or whatever and I click on it and it goes to MySpace or something like that. There are, of course, numerous software programs available that alert parents when inappropriate information is shared on their computer. Some software will even alert the parent via email on a BlackBerry or at work. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to reminding kids that there are a lot of creeps in cyberspace. But if you're having trouble talking to your kids about all this, iSafe offers a step-by-step -step program to help. To access it, just go to iSafe.org. It informs them, gives them tips that they can actually, you know, be thinking about themselves, and then actually helps them in terms of how they would apply this in terms of their own real life or even within their own house. You'll also find information on how to protect children from Internet predators on our website. We've got a complete online safety kit. Just log on to Dateline.MSNBC.com. Coming up on Dateline Friday is the fiction that launched the phenomenon that will not stop.